Hi, well, this afternoon I'm going to talk to you about the Sussex B Atlas, which is a project I've been working on for the last couple of years. Uh, I'm especially going to focus on some, but not all, of the challenges I've encountered along the way, as I thought that would be uh, of interest to people. And in the process I'll also share some insights on the statuses of five species in the county. Um, but of, before I do so, though, I really do want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been helping me along the way. It's quite a um, quite an undertaking, possibly a bit bit bigger than I had uh, anticipated when I started. But I've had an awful lot of help from uh, a variety of different people who've been very generous with their time, but also with their knowledge and with insights as well. And in terms of the presentation as well, I do also want to make sure I say a thank you to the uh, photographers who've uh, allowed me to use their images this afternoon. So just a bit of a uh, bit of context. When I came across this quote from Edward Saunders in 1905, my heart did sink a little bit. Obviously, only temporarily. Um, and what he said was, uh, "The list of the aculeata of this county hardly compares well with that of either Surrey or Kent." And he wrote this in 1905 when he was writing the introduction to a summary of the bees, wasps, and ants of Sussex in the Victoria County history. Happily, he goes on to qualify that statement by adding, the reason for this appears to be that although the coast has been visited and worked by numerous entomologists, the centre and north, judging from the paucity of records, have been much neglected. He himself, for example, pretty much concentrated on places like Hastings, Bognor Regis, Worthing and um, Eastbourne for his, his visit. So there are no inland records from Edward Saunders, for example, from Sussex. He goes on to add, there's a bit of encouragement for me here, when these latter have had due attention paid to them, no doubt the comparison with those of the neighbouring counties will, fa will be favourable. But was he correct? So happily, Sur Surrey had a, um, its first atlas back in 2008. Um, Kent has been blessed by having two editions of Jeff Allen's brilliant Bees, Wasps and Ants of Kent atlas, most recently produced in 2020. Sussex... Uh, obviously doesn't yet have an atlas but I hope that the Sussex Bee Atlas will come out in 2023 all being well but how does the county compare was Saunders correct you know when he said that when these latter latter have had due attention paid to them no doubt the comparison with those of the neighboring counties will be favorable well finding out how Sussex compares has not been without its challenges as you can imagine and so I just thought I'd uh, run through the five biggest just to share those with you because I thought they'd be, be of interest and also share some insights into the status of uh, the uh, five different species of bee in the, in the county. So first up, uh, Helictus eurygnathus is the species I focus on but data duplication is the, is the challenge I wanted to, uh, to pick out. The data for the atlas, I should say, has been largely provided by Bee Wars and also by the Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre, so those two databases have been combined. And it's fair to say that there's a certain amount of duplication in both of those, but particularly actually the Record Centre data. And to illustrate this, uh, the challenge that this has generated, I thought I'd uh, go through the data for Helictus eurygnathus with you. Now it was thought that Helictus eurygnathus was extinct in, in the British Isles until Stephen Falk rediscovered it um, on the East and South Downs when he was working on a project on, the, on a group of sites on the, in the area between Brighton and Eastbourne. And he undertook a series of quite intensive surveys between 2003 and 2008. And when his records, his data from that survey was um, is combined with the historic records for Sussex, you can see that they're all still concentrated on that one area of the East and South Downs. And it shows that the historic records for the for this species in Sussex actually matches the distribution that um, Stephen uh, first picked up and then has been repeated by other people recording in that, uh, in that area. And I should just add that the yellow dots are just records at a lower resolution than the, um, the darker green black dots. If you then look at uh, combined data set for, from Bee Wars and from the Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre for all of the data for, that's come from Stephen, you can see that there's a total of 29 records altogether um, from Stephen. When you zoom in a bit more closely, that uh, line of data shown in green, uh, don't worry about the, reading the detail, but this shows the very first record uh, when Stephen rediscovered this bee in Sussex from the 17th of May in 2004. If you look at the data, there are three lines of data that I've picked out that in red. Those are repeats of that first record. 
but what the where the puzzle part of the puzzle comes in is that they've got different grid references to that original record but also they also have different dates showing so it's uh, a, can be a bit confusing if I then go through all of Stephen's records for this species, it then shows that, um, in fact, we've got se just 17 good records, not the 29 that uh, was first assumed, and 12 of those records that were first picked out are actually duplicates. Now, Helictus urignathus is uh, a relatively straightforward species to go through because the number of records is not that significant. So overall it shows that we've got 17 good records and 12 duplicates in the, in the data by removing those, uh, those duplicates. And looking at the revised mapping, it, show, it shows that a few dots have uh, disappeared. Those are the ones that picked out in red. But generally, actually, it's not too much of an issue because the distribution of Helictus urignathus in Sussex broadly stays the, the same. It's still confined to the Brighton to Beachy Head area. If you then look at data for a much more complicated, more um, widespread species, in this case Andrina minutula, you can see that the, the challenge actually rises a bit. Here is the original data mapped uh, across the county and it shows 582 records in Sussex for this species. However, when you drill down and look for duplicates, you find that there's about 70 records are, are actually duplicates, so have to be set aside. And again, Andrina Minutra, it was a bit, a bit of a process going through that data, but essentially it wasn't too difficult. Where the challenge really comes in is with the more abundant, more frequently recorded species. So in this case, uh, I've put up a map of Bombus pascorum in Sussex, and you can see that there's an awful lot of red dots popping up. And altogether, actually, there were just over 3,000 records However, when you take out duplicates, there's 2,900 or so that need to be set aside. If you repeat that process of looking at uh, duplicates through the whole data set, you end up with about 41,700 good records for Sussex, but about 6,000 that have had to be set aside because they're duplicates in some form or other. And just finally, a little note on um, uh, Helictus urignathus. As I was saying, it's historically been, um, even in modern times, known from just that Brighton to Beachy Head area. But actually, in 2019, Adam Wright discovered a, um, a population breeding in West Sussex, close to Slindon. And it was there again in 2020. And I'm very happy to say that at a reservoir in the same area in 2022, it was also present. Of course, what we don't know is whether or not this is uh, a new uh, a st population establishing itself or whether this is a colony that's just not been known about before because the the location where it was seen in 2022, for example, is a, a former water reservoir that doesn't have very good access to it. So um, uh, it's highly likely that, well, either option could be uh, could apply. Either it's been overlooked all this time or it's uh, new a new colonisation. We just don't know. Second challenge, which has also been quite significant, has been the process of interpreting the historic records. And here I'll uh, show you uh, some details on Nomada sex fasciata, which is extinct in Sussex now, but um, shows some interesting, um, interesting points to do with the, the challenge of the historic record. And so going through historic data has been um, quite, a, quite a process, but also very rewarding, very fulfilling. One of the best resources is the Biodiversity Heritage Library, which is an online resource. And through this website, you can look at uh, all the editions of uh, journals like the, the Naturalist or the Entomologist Monthly Magazine, up with this particular one up until, I think it's the 1920s. Um, and, uh, and also another very valuable source of, uh, source of records has been the Transactions of the Entomological Society of London. There have been, been many others to look at. This altogether has generated about 590 good records. There's about 303, 300 or so that um, I've sort of had some concerns about, either because species have been subsequently split into new new species, or because there's a lack of clarity over the name, or actually it might just be a question of confidence in the person who's making the record. So it's a bit a bit of judgment involved in there, but. Um, 590 good historical records is uh, is not a bad return for for going through all of that um, those um, records in that uh, in those magazines journals. A very nice example is the um, Entomologist Monthly magazine from 1879, and this is an excerpt from um, 
uh, an edition that was uh, where Edward Saunders was contributing regularly. Um, and he was a regular visitor to Hastings, so there's uh, a few good records from his visits to the to the county. And this, for example, is the only record for Helictus maculatus in Sussex, which he picked up uh, near on Fairlight Glen, which is a site very close to to Hastings. On the same visit, it was an amazing visit for him. He also found Nomada sex fasciata, also at Fairlight. Um, and this uh, this was the very first record for uh, for this species in in Sussex, which is which is a good a nice thing to come across in the in the date in the record. And just sort of looking at the uh, data that came from the Biodiversity Records Centre and from Bee Wars, you can see that um, Edward Saunders' record is there on the second line, uh, and is a, is a good record. And we're very happily um, very happily this is a specimen that's in the I think is in the Natural History Museum in London has been checked by uh, George Else as well. So that's that's great. So that's a confirmed record. Moving on to the top line, though, there's a record from uh, W. R. Butterfield from 1927. So there's a question that poses: Is is this a, a valid record? One of the reasons why I was curious about it is that it gives Hastings Country Park as the location name. Well, Hastings Country Park is, of course, a, a, a modern invention. Well, w. R. or William Ruskin Butterfield was the curator of Hastings Museum. And happily, 21 of his specimens have survived in the uh, uh, collections of Hastings Museum. Although, unfortunately, none, none, of, uh, of, the, uh, none of these are of Nomada sex fasciata. Interestingly, his brother Ross Butterfield was curator of a museum as well, but this time in Keighley in Yorkshire. And his collection has survived in quite good order. And uh, the curator of the museum there was very kind very happy to send me a photograph of uh, the Nomada sex fasciata specimens in um, Butterfield's collection and lo and behold there is uh, there are specimens for this species uh, and they have the location label of, of Hastings given. They don't though say who the collector was or give the give the date so the collector is given as uh, as Ross Butterfield the brother of the curator in, in Hastings so we don't know who the collector was, was it Ruskin or was it Ross, uh, and we don't know the date. However, it does confirm that uh, Nomada sex fasciata was present in Hastings at around the this time. Number three, the third challenge, is uh, a bit more of a, an open-ended question, uh, which is can you trust the record? In this particular case, uh, the one the species I'm going to look at is Rafitis quinque spinosus. This was recorded uh, by the Reverend Edwin Bloomfield near Hastings in 1877 and again in 1878. Now he is an interesting character, he was a, a leading light in the Hastings and East Sussex Natural History Society and so for example regularly provided nature notes for s successive editions of the Society's Natural History magazine. And he also led lots of natural history walks that would often end in, uh, in tea and cake at the, uh, at the rectory in, in Gessling where he lived. He also contributed lots of records to Edward Saunders that were included in the 1905 Victoria County History of Sussex. However, these are the only two records for this species in Britain, so it's sort of reasonable to ask questions about their validity. And this is a, a quote from uh, the uh, magazine where he uh, first reported finding this species, and he says, I've been fortunate enough to meet with a second specimen of Rafitis quinque spinosus, having taken a specimen here, a female, on the afternoon of the 4th of August. It's a bit of a puzzle this, because um, the countryside around Gessling is a patchwork of small fields and woodland, so this for example is Gessling Wood, and it's a very different landscape to the sort of places where Rafitis quinque spinosus is now found. It's also very very different uh, climatically, so as I understand it, uh, Rafitis quinque spinosus is a species of hot dry species rich grassland so this is a photograph of um, suitable habitat in Germany for example so there's a, a real puzzle over the validity of this record I haven't felt able to discount it because we've got a, a pinned labeled specimen in the Natural History Museum London with a with a location label but it just uh, shows that even though even when you have um, specimens uh, present there's still it's still reasonable to uh, pose questions about whether or not a record should stand 
this sort of process of can you trust the the record is obviously an obvious point to make because it is much easier to resolve for um for uh, more modern records. So I've been very fortunate in being able to go back to a number of uh, recorders who've retained specimens. So for example though there, there was a record for Lazia Glossum Rufitas for Sussex and also a, a, a record amongst a number for Magicali Circumcincta, both of which looked a little bit questionable so I was able to go back to the, uh, to the recorders and they were happy to check their collections and actually those records have been set aside. Obviously, for a historic record where the collector is no longer with us, of course, uh, that's a bit more of a challenge. So there's a question mark over the record for that uh, for Rafiti's Quinque Spinosis. Another challenge is this question of whether or not all the data has been shared. So here, um, I thought I'd uh, pick out some information around Anthophora retusa, which has a good good population in Sussex, although it's uh, restricted distribution. And it's uh, in, in the British Isles, it's currently restricted to just three places. So that's, I think it's the uh, Dorset and the Isle of Wight and uh, Sussex, with a fourth colony from the Farnborough area, I think has now uh, now been lost. So in, in Sussex, this is the uh, sort of four areas where it's being recorded. Um, and uh, Seaford Head is this location down here at the um, the bottom right of the screen I picked out in the arrow. At Seaford Head, the species nests just in the cliffs at, at the um, at the at the um, at the coast. So it nests in the sort of sandy deposits above that are on the top of the chalk, and it's um, it's always been thought, or long been thought, that this population had been discovered in 1995. And this is uh, a zoom in of where all the modern records are now of uh, Anthophora retusa in Sussex. However, one of the things I've been fortunate enough to spend some time doing is going through the collections in the Booth Museum in Brighton. I've got a, a lot of material, so they've got a material belonging to John Felton, for example, but also um, Alfred Jones, who's a, a known local Sussex naturalist who's concentrated mostly on, on plants, but also collected a number of different uh, entomological groups as well. And he has sort of something in the region of a thousand or fifteen hundred uh, aculeate specimens, which I've been able to go through, as well as um, uh, as well as his notebooks. And it transpires that uh, this species was actually present at uh, Seaford Head as far back as 1967. Uh, it just happens that he hadn't uh, shared his his records, his data. So I mean that poses the question of what other records have been lost or not been shared over time. And of course, it's impossible to know, but it, it just reinforces actually the value of um, of the museums and museum collections. So, because it's uh, a, there's been a wealth of really good data that's come from uh, museums like the Booth Museum in in Brighton for me. Uh, the next sort of challenge error that I wanted to um, pick up for you is uh, just that simple matter of human error, which um, applies to lots of uh, lots of situations. In this particular case, I thought I'd uh, go through the data for Bombus distinguendus in uh, in Sussex. This is the uh, mapping that shows where the the three locations are that picked were picked up in the Sussex record Sussex data for for this species. Three locations. So let's go through them one by one. The most easterly record, uh, happily is also one that was picked up in the Atlas of the Bumblebees of the British Isles. So this is a specimen that was reviewed by Dave Alford uh, and so the record has, is obviously uh, is clearly a good one for the, uh, for the to include in the in the Atlas. Second record is a bit of a puzzle it's from 1999 and the name of the recorder uh, is actually somebody who largely records in Scotland rather than down in Sussex. I think this is the only Sussex record given for them. And having reviewed this record with Mike Edwards, the conclusion was that this is a tra uh, mistrans mistranscription of the grid reference and that this is not a uh, not a, actually a Sussex record. So data entry error. Third record is is an intriguing one. And there's uh, the two lines of data that match this record are uh, are shown here on the screen. And the habitat is right. Uh, Stoke Clump is a place that exists in West Sussex. The grid reference matches Stoke Clump. The Vice County is correct. 
The date matches the known flight season for uh, for this species. But who was J.W. Saint? Now, for many, of, well, for all of the more frequently recorded species, you wouldn't necessarily worry about investigating the name of the recorder. But for such a significant record, uh, we didn't feel comfortable about including this record in the in the atlas without a bit of um, investigation. So we needed to get to the bottom of it. But how? That was quite um, was quite a challenge. The obvious place to start was uh, was local museums. Um, these hold extensive collections of aculeate hymenoptera, do they, so do they have any information? The upshot was that actually no, they don't, um, but interestingly the curator at Portsmouth Museum, who's been very helpful throughout this process, did point out that there was somebody called J.W. Saunt, uh, who was based on the Isle of Wight. So was it possible that uh, Saunt's name has been misspelt and in the record and has been put down as Saint? that's possible um, sort of a recommendation or conclusion but of course where then is Saunt's collection has it survived because the, the records did say that they there were specimens supporting the um, the data so where, where are they well again with help from the from the curator at Portsmouth Museum uh, it was established that Saunt's collection has actually survived and is uh, most of it is in the Herbert Art Gallery Museum in Coventry which is obviously great news and the curator very kindly sent me photos of the specimens of Bombus distinguendus that they hold. And uh, this is one, one of them. And I think it uh, takes us to, um, to an answer. If you just look, I don't know, expect you to be able to pick out the detail in that, uh, within that red ring. But if you can see it, you'll see that the, um, uh, the name Stoke is there. Not Stoke Clump, but Stoke. The date matches, and the date on the second specimen also actually matches the second record. Uh, but the name given as the uh, uh, collector is J. W. Saunt, not J. W. Saint. Now it's possible that uh, these are actually Warwickshire records, and that there's some error has crept into the way the record has been um, transferred into the database. So there's a lot of doubt as to whether or not Stoke Clump is actually the right name because it doesn't match the specimen. The grid reference therefore is also invalid. The dates are correct and there's also a question mark over the, um, over the name J.W. Saint. Now of course it's always possible that there was somebody by the name of J.W. Saint who did visit Stoke Clump on the same two dates that J.W. Saunt visited Stoke and collected specimens of the same species. But given the significance of this particular um, pair of records there's sufficient doubt for us to decide that actually this record should be these records should be set aside. So just to just to conclude, was the question uh, going back to the question that Edward Saunders asked at the very beginning? Uh, when these latter have had due attention paid to them, no doubt the comparison with those of the neighbouring counties will be favourable. Well, was, was he correct? Was he right? Uh, unfortunately, I can't give um, precise figures for either for Surrey or for Kent because, of course, even since, or uh, well, for example, since the Kent Atlas was uh, produced as a second edition in uh, 2020, there have been at least two new species added to the British list, both with um, the split in Andrina avatula and with the split in and uh, Nomada panzeri, for example. But what I can say is that they're very close to um, to Sussex which uh, I now know has got uh, 224 species have been recorded in the county, uh, but also pos with a um, big question mark over the aggregate in Bombus leucorum, for example, because we don't, we don't know which of the three species are actually present in the county. But either way, you can definitely say that the three counties are, are very, very close to each other. So that's everything I was going to say uh, this afternoon. So just finally, if there are any questions, I'll see if I can see if I can answer them for you. Thank you.